Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of my new installation of my ongoing series, They Don't Tell You. Um, in this installation, we will be talking specifically about low back pain. There are so many things to talk about with low back pain. Um, I had to split it definitely into a few episodes. But I would like to get started today talking about um, what is the importance of talking about low back pain, right? So it actually affects 80% of Americans at some point in their lifetime and costs annually about $50 billion in the healthcare system. And that's right, you heard that billion with a B, uh, which is a lot of money that we are spending on trying to figure out why we're having low back pain. A lot of times in my office, I will see patients coming in that have had low back pain for quite a long time, right? They've seen a number of providers, they've tried physical therapy, they've tried injections, they've tried surgery, um, they've tried so many things and they just haven't found any relief. And I kind of want to dive into today why we see that specifically with low back pain and how we can not be a victim of this sort of um, misappropriate uh, care in, in the medical system. So there are a couple um, acronyms that I actually really like that I heard at a conference uh, within the last year. Um, barf and vomit. And I, this might be, uh, you know, because I have two little boys at home and they, uh, they think words like that are super funny, um, but they actually are super applicable here. So BARF stands for Brainless Application of Radiologic Findings. And I see that that happens a lot with patients uh, with low back pain. They'll come to me and they will already have their diagnosis um, that they have bulging um, discs, they have herniated discs, or they have um, what we call degenerative disc disease um, that has been diagnosed by another provider, has been diagnosed on imaging, and that's the, the rabbit hole that they keep um, going down and the um, diagnosis they keep chasing. Um, but they're not actually finding relief. And this leads to vomit. They've become a victim of medical imaging technology, right? Um, so the provider has you know, taken their history, hopefully, um, ordered the MRI and said, no, oh, look, right here, we have that, uh, that bulging disc. Um, this is you know, the cause of your pain. Uh, this is what we're going to treat, and a lot of times these patients end up with surgery. Um, unfortunately, uh, the studies just don't bear this out, right? We, when we have findings on imaging, you really have to correlate that with the clinical symptoms that the patient is presenting with. Um, a 2015 study in the American Journal of Neuroradiology actually showed that if you took and imaged um, the backs of 120 year olds, 37% of them will have some signs of degenerative disc disease. 30% of those 20 year olds will have um, disc bulging. 100% of those 20 year olds were completely asymptomatic, meaning they had no symptoms of back pain, but they do have these radiologic findings. And those numbers actually increase as we age. So in the same number, so if you took 180 year olds and imaged their backs, 96% of those 80 year olds are gonna have signs of degenerative disc disease in the lumbar spine. 84% of those will have disc bulging. 100% of those are completely asymptomatic. So we really have to start questioning, why are we using these images to justify surgery when there's really not any case for a clinical correlation to the symptoms that patients are having? These individuals have messed up images, right? And we're seeing the discs in between the levels of the spine really getting compressed. Um, and then we're also seeing them kind of bulge out, which we would, you know, think, oh, yep, that's, that's it. But none of these patients were having symptoms. So it really puts that question mark into your head of what are we chasing? What are we actually treating? So when you go into a physician, they need to be taking a really thorough history, right? Um, one of the things that we learned very early on in our medical education is the OPQRST. That stands for onset, preceding events, quality, radiation, severity, and timing. All of these things are super important to getting to the actual root cause of your pain because there are a lot of tissues in your low back that can be causing pain. 
It could be the joint. It could be the ligaments that are holding the joint together. It could be nerve irritation. It could actually be that disc. You could be one of those people where your disc is symptomatic, um, but you're not gonna know that without having a thorough um, questioning of what's actually going on um, and also a very thorough physical exam. There are ways to stress each of those tissues with a physical exam and reproduce your symptoms in office. If your provider has not reproduced your symptoms and they're already suggesting a course of treatment, run the other way. <laughs> Unless they have proven to themselves and proven to you that they know exactly where your pain is coming from, suggesting a treatment for that pain is just not appropriate. Um, and then there are definitely some red flag symptoms that your provider should be asking about and hopefully getting a really good handle on to make sure that the cause of your low back pain is purely mechanical and that there's not some other cause going on. The big scaries that we need to rule out obviously are always um, cancer, right? That can definitely be cause of pain. If you are having pain that is worse at night, um, or pain that is accompanied by unintentional weight loss. These are big red flags that we need to be looking for some sort of um, metastatic cause of your, your back pain. Um, other red flag symptoms that your provider should be asking about um, are fever, new onset sexual dysfunction, new onset bowel dysfunction, so any changes in um, urinary frequency or ease of bowel movements. Um, again, the pain worse at night, unintentional weight loss, they should always be checking your reflexes when you are having a physical exam in office, making sure that that, you know, when they tap on your knee and you have that automatic uh, knee jerk reaction, um, both increase in that reflex and decrease in that reflex are giving us um, valuable information about what's going on at the spinal level. Um, and then any changes in um, the saddle region. So if you think of the area um, of your body that touches a horse saddle, if there's any change of sensation in that area, that also could lead us towards a diagnosis that is more emergent um, that we need to consider and take care of right away. So hopefully this is giving you some information of what your doctor should be asking about, what your doctor maybe didn't ask about if you've already been down this journey of low back pain, um, and how to really get some real answers and some real help. So if you found any of this information helpful, follow along with the rest of this low back pain series. We're going to be talking about, um, you know, proper imaging techniques, proper physical exams that your, your doctor should be considering, how to evaluate um, all of these things, and then possible treatments. You know, that does include sometimes for patients, surgery, um, injections, physical therapy, but right time and right place for everything. Um, so if you find this valuable, follow along, share and subscribe.